Hey guys, if you saw the previous video, I showed you some of the basics of Cura, some of the uh, essentially core parameters that you can put to manipulate your STL file. Um, now we're going to get into a little greater detail. If you now have open Cura and you have a small understand or a uh, decent understanding of the basic and advanced functions, we can go into greater detail. There is actually, if you go to view mode, uh, there is different uh, essentially viewpoints you can look at your file. Uh, probably the most useful would be X-Ray. Now X-Ray essentially uh, detects any voids in your STL file. For SolidWorks it is almost impossible to do so but for many other CAD softwares when you upload or I'm sorry when you create the solid or the mesh you can actually create a void. Uh, these are usually lower end CAD softwares that actually uh, don't rely on extrusion. They create you actually physically uh, plaster the mesh on the outside of of your uh, uh, what's the word a uh, wireframe. So that's that's not really a problem with SolidWorks. But for those that don't have another software, it could be something that's uh, very common a uh, common mistake. Uh, for this situation, you just have. Uh, this file here. If there were any ports, it would come out in red and you would see them very easily. For here, of course, everything looks fine. So that's one feature to use. You also have transparent to see if there's any cavities on the inside of your part, which is essentially what uh, X-Ray does. You have overhang, which shows you any overhang. Anything in red is overhang and that depends on your parameters. So when you go to support, expert config, you actually determine the angle and what actually is determined as overhang. As you see the minimal angle, that overhangs needs to be, needs to have to get support, and I set it at 60 degrees. There's another feature, uh, which is layers, probably the most important one. This actually will show you the toolpath your uh, extrude or your printer will actually take. And you see the red is the outer layer, yellow being the infill. And the green, I believe, is the inside of the outer layer. So the red being the most outermost outer layer. And so you can see every layer by layer. The first layer is set at this point because of my parameters here, the bottom and top thickness, 1.2 millimeters. We're essentially at 1.2 millimeters. And now it's beginning to create the infill. And as it builds and it builds and builds, it'll reach a point where it actually stops. And now it creates the arms for the shroud and so on. So that is one of the functions. Um, there are many parameters here that I cannot actually go over. Most of these parameters you can hover over with your mouse and it'll actually explain it to you in pretty good detail. Um, it's really just a matter of playing around with a lot of these settings to see what is best uh, for your print. Uh, but another thing I'd like to point out is the plugins. You have a variety of plugins that you can download online that do different things for your part. Uh, one of these being Tweak. This is probably one of the most common. So essentially if you use, uh, this is just an example I'm using, there are many out there which all have their own instructions that you can, you're free to take a look. But this is just an example which you can do. So here with Tweak I can actually change the speed of the printer halfway through the print. Um, not something you'll be able to do with most other uh, G-code slicers. So for instance here I Z height to Tweak at 5 millimeters. So at 5 millimeters any of the parameters I set here will be the new parameters I can change the extruder row, uh, flow rate, the speed of the printer, the bed temperature, extruder temperature, fan speed uh, for the cooling fan, things of that nature. Um, another thing that they do have is a start and end G code so you can actually change what the printer does to get ready for the actual print. Um, this is usually not needed to this is not needed to be modified. Uh, for some people in certain situations they might need to if their printer isn't 100% compatible with Cura. But for now it is not something you will most likely need to use. For this application though, you can see uh, there's a time estimation up here, 34 minutes. And so you can know that this printer uh, is going to take 34 minutes. I'm sorry, this actual STF file will take 34 minutes to print with the parameters that you have set. So I hope uh, this has been very helpful and that you guys can enjoy playing around with Cura. It's a great, great G-code slicer and a very powerful uh, program. But um, let us know if you have any questions and send us an email at fau3dprinteroffice at 